So welcome to episode three of our Women in Life Science podcast mini series. I have Sherry Bailey with me today, uh, who is our head of global quality, regulatory, clinical and PMO at uh, DSM. Um, Sherry, thank you very much for joining us today and for doing the talk. Thank you. As you eloquently stated, I am Sherry Bailey. So I am the global head of quality regulatory clinical and PMO at DSM Biomedical. I've actually been with DSM Biomedical three years now. Uh, but prior to that, I started my career in the nutraceutical pharmaceutical world. Uh, so I was in that for quite a bit of time and then decided to transition over into medical devices, which I thoroughly enjoy, um, but have been part of this industry for about over 22 years now. Wow. Impressive. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, great. Um, so obviously, um, you've been in the industry for a while. It's obviously something that you're, you're passionate about. Yeah. Who is it that inspired you to initially get into the industry? It's a very interesting question, and I chuckle every time I tell this story. So my dad, way back when, he actually worked for OSHA, and he was doing an OSHA inspection on a facility, and he happened to run across an opening that they had for what was called a quality specialist. Now, I was very young at the time, right out of high school. I had just enrolled in college, but I decided to do the working college route. Uh, so he came to me and he said, hey, uh, any interest in this quality specialist role? I'm like, I have no idea what this is. Looked at the job description, felt very intriguing considering it was making products for the market. And it was really something that intrigued me. So I applied, fast forward, got the position, and I've been in the quality field ever since. It's a very interesting story, um, yeah. but I owe it to my dad, believe it or not, that inspired me to enter this world. Fantastic. What, what a lovely story, though. What a nice Thank story. You. Thank you. <laughs> Brilliant. So um, obviously, yeah, fantastic. You've been inspired by your dad to get into the industry. That's that that's brilliant. Really lovely story. Um, obviously, switching it over to women within the industry and within business. Um, what would you say is the biggest challenge that you have faced so far as a woman in the industry or in business as a whole? Yeah, I think the common answer is being part of a male dominant industry. But I will say, and I do want to just assure folks out there that are listening, world the world has changed. It's not the same as years ago. So while yes, women are still subject to limitations in some arenas, there are a wealth of opportunities for women in the workplace. I would say that the thing I want to point out the most is live in your authentic self. I think a lot of times because women are very much in the mindset that I have to be very aggressive and very stern to get my point across and be heard, when in fact, if you're in the right work environment, you could be your authentic self and still achieve that. So if you find yourself, and this is my key takeaway here for folks, if you find yourself being in a position where you're altering your authentic self to be more stern or be more aggressive in your delivery to be heard, then the writing is on the wall that you're probably not in the right work environment. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a really important takeaway. Um, yeah, I think, as you say, you know, if you're having to change yourself, then it's probably time to change the environment around you rather than changing yourself. So Absolutely. yeah, very, very interesting. Now yeah. on, on the flip side of that in a more positive light, yeah. what would you say is the biggest change that you've seen that positively impacts women in the workplace? Acceptability of the uniqueness that we bring. Right. Uh, so I can't tell you how many times I get complimented on my fashion as an example. <laughs> right. Um, so I yeah. think women really bring a sense of creativity and uniqueness in the workplace. And if done right, you could really uplift and create a culture within the workplace that's diverse and uh, inclusive. Uh, so I think that's really what I would say to answer that question is, is being able to bring a uniqueness to the workplace. My background is I'm Egyptian. Uh, so I was born in Egypt 
and I came to the States when I was six years old. So with that, uh, my everything has changed over time, right, in terms of my traditions, the way I do things, the way I appear, right? So I think being able to grow into who I have become and embracing that and allowing the workplace to embrace that as well, being a true authentic, again, going back to that word authenticity, yeah. a true authentic woman in the workplace has really uh, allowed me to show my real self. And I think um, for those listening, as a woman, as an inspire, aspiring woman leader, or even if you're in leadership already, again, the, the thing I always want to hone in on is being true to yourself. If that means wearing dress pants to work, wear the dress pants. If that means you want to wear a dress to work, wear the dress, right? Be your authentic self, professional in all means, obviously, but be your authentic self and do not allow um, workplace stigmas to limit you. Fantastic. Yeah, that's yeah something really important to take away, I think, is, yeah, as you say, being your your authentic self and going back to your point before and, and sort of saying that, you know, don't change yourself. Maybe it's the environment around you. I think, yeah, really important points there. Absolutely. Um, so obviously we've spoken a bit about sort of some advice that you'd give to others and, and important takeaways for other people. What is the best piece of advice that you've been given since working in industry? I also chuckle. And this is not the first time I've heard this question, but I chuckle with my answer for, for this all the time. And I want to say about 12 years ago, I was working with an individual. He was my boss at the time. And he told me something during a one-on-one -on -one that has always stuck with me. And what he said was, the best leaders are the laziest leaders. And it took me a while to understand what that meant. And I think as I grew into my career, I finally connected the dots on, on what the interpretation is and was. I wouldn't use the word lazy, but I understand yeah. the concept. I think what was meant to be said is the best leaders are those that develop their team make make sure that the team is working so much on autopilot that all you're doing is really just managing the outcome of those team members the the worst leaders or the most poor leaders are the ones that have to dive deep don't give their team empowerment are always constantly in the weeds of what's going on those are the team members um those are the leaders that really don't allow their team to flourish. So I took that and it really has resonated with me. And it's something that I always keep in the back of my mind to say to myself, am I being the best leader I can be in this scenario or am I not giving my team enough empowerment to be able to make decisions? What advice would you give to other young women who are looking to maybe start their career in the industry? Take the plunge. If it's something you've been thinking about and holding back on because of X, Y, Z reasons, I'll be the first to tell you there will never be a perfect time to take the plunge. So if it's something that you want to do, go for it. If it's made for you, it will be made for you and it's for you. Uh, so never hold yourself back or limit yourself in terms of what you want to do because of your personal insecurities, doubts, or fears. That would be the biggest point to take home uh, for, for young women out there that are listening or any woman out there listening, to be frank. Um, yeah. I think we are our biggest enemies. Sometimes we, we tend to overthink things and overthink scenarios. So sometimes we just got to let it go and go with the flow and, and go with our instinct to, to take the plunge. Absolutely. Um, now, just jumping back to, to a moment ago when you said about um, sort of having trust in your team as a good leader and making your team feel empowered, what would you say it is that makes you feel the most empowered? Being in a situation where I feel heard, mm -hmm. being in a situation yep. where I feel respected, being in a situation where I feel appreciated. And let's be honest, there is no miraculous workplace where you 100% of the time feel all the above. But the important yeah. part is to recognize if it's an isolated situation or if it's a common situation, right? So if you yeah. feel any of those elements uh, from time to time, but in an isolated manner, that those are moments where it's important for you to connect with individuals or groups that are making you feel this way and be very open and communicate those issues or concerns that you have. That way it's very 
clearly known. They can make whatever actions or necessary adjustments they need to do because sometimes people just don't know. People may offend you and don't realize that they offended you. So yeah. communication is key from that regard. Now, if you communicate it and they still have some view on it, then that's a different story, right? But nine out of 10 times when you communicate it, it's chalked up to a misunderstanding. The, the other part is if you feel like it's not isolated and it feels more common than not, then that could be an indication of a toxic environment, right? So it's really yeah. important that, again, you, you educate and you coach along the way. If at all you feel any doubt or insecurity or uh, concern, and if, again, folks, folks are receptive and they're willing to make the change, fantastic. But if you're feeling like it's become a constant situation, then to me, those are signals of toxicity potentially in the workplace. Absolutely. And how do you think as women, we can support other women within the workplace? Because obviously, you know, everyone should be supporting each other, but I think it's as important to kind of start with women. So how do you think we can best do that? Celebrate each other, compliment each other, praise each other, teach each other, coach each other, mentor each other, just togetherness, right? Uh, yeah. Often too many times because, and again, maybe it's a different world now than before, but there weren't a lot of great opportunities for, for women. There weren't a, lot, a, a high volume of opportunities, right? So mm -hmm. it became a very competitive market. So you could be a peer with an individual, but then if both of you are going for the same progressive opportunity, that could cause some tension within the relationship. So I think if, if you go about it as there's a place and time for each one of us and along the journey, I will celebrate you. I will mentor you. I will coach you. I will appreciate you. And if the same is, is met in mutual from the other party, there is, there is no doubt in my mind that, uh, both, both parties will succeed. Yeah, absolutely. Um, how do you think we can start to enforce and implement gender equity business-wide company-wide globally? I think the best approach, to be honest, is to not focus so much on what's missing, but focus on what we have, right? Okay. The more we focus yeah. on the, the disparity, the more we focus on the how far we are from getting to where we need to go. I think if we start fresh and say day one, we are all equals. We are all in this together. We're all in the same workplace. We're all striving for the same thing. We're all in the same workforce or industry or whatever the case is, even outside of our work bubbles. If we say this is day one where we are all equals and whatever opportunities present themselves, all of us have an equal share to be able to gain that opportunity. I think it'll be a much different place. It's almost like uh, if we keep hounding on the, the fact that there is disparity, there will always be disparity. But I think if we, and I'm not saying turn a blind eye to it, it's really important to recognize that there are gaps and, and that these are things that we have to address. But if we continue to identify the gaps, but don't work at, together to influence and change the gaps, I think we will always be stuck in this circle of madness. So my recommendation would be, let's look at it as day one, we're all equals, let's go into to this together. If you're a, if you're a boss, if you're a manager, your next promotion that you give your team, make sure you're looking at it through the same lens, be it a man or woman or whatever. Um, if you're a team member and you're in a meeting, look through all of the folks in that conference room with the same lens, let all of them be heard in the same way, let all of them articulate in the same way, let all of them explain uh, their position in the same way. And I think if we all take that stance, ultimately we will vanish uh, the, the perception that we have today. And again, I'm not saying it's not a real thing and it's very much a real thing, but if we continue to hound on pointing at the problem versus being part of the solution, I think we'll never get anywhere. Yeah. I like that. I think that's sort of making, as you say, it's a very serious and real thing that we need to recognize and not ignore, but it's more of a positive way to look at things by focusing on what we do have what and appreciating and being grateful for what is in place, which That's is nice right. because I think these conversations around equity, equality can almost have a negative connotation to them because it seems like 
there's just sort of complaining going on when actually that's not necessarily the case it's just realizing that there are issues but yeah I I really like that appreciating and and being grateful for what we have so yeah I think that's a nice fresh way to actually look at it so yeah fantastic great um just another question for me then um do you personally ever feel like being a woman has put you at a disadvantage in your career there I, I think there's one scenario that comes to mind when I was in a particular work environment and I was the to be frank the only female leader within that work environment and I think maybe it was due to my personal sensitivities around that that everything that happened kind of exacerbated into is this because I'm a woman kind of in my mind I was thinking yeah. that but you know maybe it was maybe it wasn't uh, but for instance, if we're in a meeting and it's nine of us, and again, I'm the single woman in the meeting, if someone needed to take notes, they would point to me to take the notes. And it was things like that where I I just felt like those deep down insecurities about, are they asking for me to take notes because I am the female out of the group? Or are they asking me to take notes because I'm detail oriented and, you know, I'm going to summarize it in a way that is going to be well interpreted later. Right. So there are things that I battled with. And again, it could be either direction, but those are the elements I think I've dealt with in my career. Um, But like I said, as I've evolved in, in, in my career, and the world has evolved as well. I'm, I'm very seldomly in situations like that. I think we're, we're a more inclusive and diverse world now. Um, yeah. But yeah, I have, I have experienced at least what I felt uh, symptoms of, of that. Yeah, well, that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, part of the problem is that even now, I'm not sure how long ago that was, but even now you're still doubting, was it all in your head? So yeah. I think that's the, the problem, isn't it? That we're facing, it's not just a case of, was it because you're a woman, but it's the the additional effect of, is it me? Is it all in my head? Am I the one that's kind of overthinking this? Is, you know, is this actually the reality or not? And, you know, the other people in the room probably didn't think twice about it once they left the room. So absolutely not. Yep, that's, exactly. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the problem, isn't it? Um, it, 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 is, it but is. as you say, you know, try and look at the positive side of things, try and spin out. I mean, if anyone's in that situation and they can just look at it as, you know, it's because I'm detail oriented, then, then great. Even though perhaps I, that may not be true in that situation. If as yeah. a woman, you take back the control and, and the power of the situation, you decide that that's why they've asked you to do something. Hopefully in time, it will become a reality. Absolutely. Uh, now, the way I spun that is the second time that they asked me to do this, I recommended that we do rotations. So uh, that, that was a way to <laughs> kind of mitigate that situation to not make it a norm for me to mm-hmm. be the note taker uh, and yeah. also include others and make sure that one, they kind of read between the lines that this is a, a group effort and not a single yeah. person effort here. Um, but also to, to let them know that, you know, there was a, a a feeling that came from that ask. So making yeah. sure again, it became more of an inclusive activity versus Sherry, take the notes while we talk about these great things. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I think it's a very professional and fair way to handle that. Um, and I think for anyone that's listening that maybe has been in that situation before, um, I'm sure that, you know, I, I've been in positions like that before in, in former jobs and, and it's just about thinking if I react in a certain way or if I handle this in a certain way it will reflect badly on me so I think what you've just explained there is really important for people listening to take away that you can handle these things in a professional manner um in a way that's fair without having to worry about any of the the kind of backlash on you which again is the problem because we shouldn't have to worry about that but we're, we're in a position where where that is still a concern but yeah, I mean, as you say, let's focus on the positives. I think you've got a really fresh take on how to handle these things, which is brilliant. Um, one final question from me is what changes do you hope to see in the next, let's say, five years in the workplace? I'm actually very big on inclusion and diversity. 
<laughs> not just from women in the workplace, but across the board, inclusion and diversity. Very close to my heart is the disabilities. Uh, and the reason for that is I am a mom as well, and I have twin girls. They go by the name of Lana and Layla. Mm-hmm. And Layla was born back in 2014 with a very rare condition called Jacobson syndrome, which okay. back in 2014, she was one in about a hundred cases across the world with the syndrome. So it was extremely rare and it left her with some significant disabilities. Um, so fast forward, she's eight years old now, although the, the current literature states that 25% of children with Jacobson pass before the age of two. So she's made it beyond the stats to some degree, but in no way, shape or form has she exceeded beyond her hardships. But in any case, because disability is very near and dear to my heart, I do look for organizations across the globe to to better catapult, infuse programs uh, and such into the workplace that allow folks that have disabilities, just like my Layla, Layla's too young to work, but over time, she'll, she'll eventually be ready to work. And it's about just creating the foundation in the workplace to be able to recruit all kinds of individuals, regardless yeah. of gender, race, uh, disability, and whatnot. So that's very near and dear to my heart. So to answer your question, it would be really opening up the scope in terms of opportunity for folks that have special needs or disabilities. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, is there any sort of way that you think we can get closer to doing that? Is there anything that maybe we can do on a sort of daily or any kind of basis to help us get that step closer because I think you're you definitely won't be the only one that you know will be an advocate for that I'm sure you'll have you'll have hundreds of thousands of people behind you for that and especially when oh, as well it's interesting I, I I can't hold myself to this but I guarantee you if surveys went out in the workplace to ask people you know, to, to gauge the percent of folks within a workplace that do have special needs or disabilities, the number will be much lower than actual. And the reason yeah. for that is folks are not comfortable to speak up about potential yeah. or, or significant disabilities or special needs that they have. So I think it starts with creating an environment where folks can feel comfortable about coming Absolutely. forward about their needs. And then once we eliminate the stigma of, okay, if you are this way, I have to limit you, right? Let the individual understand because they know best what their limitations are, right? So let the individual write that destiny for themselves and don't write the destiny for them. So I think it starts with a comfortable work environment that folks can actually be open to expressing their needs. And then an environment that recognizes what folks' ambitions are and allowing them to meet those ambitions. Even if they're a little abbreviated than normal, there are still ambitions that these individuals have and there are still key talents that that the company um, could could use and and be very, um, uh, and could have a very positive spin on overall contributions to the workplace. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think, as you say, it starts with creating a comfortable environment for people people to be honest about their situations and not feel like they're being judged and you know how can we make changes to something that still not has negative connotations to it but there is an impression that people will be judged on that basis which is yeah I mean in this day and age is is a bit wild that it's still a concept (laughs) to me I know so yeah it's it's crazy but yeah, yeah I mean look that's another thing um you know that's that's on the list that we're working towards um and yeah I think that as, as you say if we can each person can make that impact so if everyone listening can try and sort of make those small one percent improvements every day then the world will become a better a big place difference. much quicker as a result of my journey I was inspired to start a non-profit Uh, called Mm -hmm. Layla's Gift after my daughter Layla. So although my personal career, I'm all about managing and and creating medical devices that help patient lives all over the world. 
Uh, in my home life, I am very big on community work. So a lot of my evenings or weekends are really spent on helping pull this mission forward to celebrate children with special needs and disabilities, just like my Layla. So we do a bunch of different community events, like we have uh, play events that are very inclusive that allow all children and families to come. And we have accessible games and, and activities for all. Uh, we also obviously have the birthday celebrations, uh, which is monumental because every year it's not just another trip around the sun for these children and families. It's also a year that signifies and marks much hardships and struggles, uh, especially with the number of doctor's appointments, therapy appointments, uh, near misses, all types of things. So it's really about celebrating the, the triumph of these families and children. And then significant milestones. Just this past December of 2022, Layla had her first set of seizures. So she, she's now considered epileptic. And she was in ICU for from Christmas morning. It actually happened on Christmas morning through the new year. And um, Wow. That really showed me that it's not just about birthday celebrations, but also significant milestones. So now we're celebrating children that also take their first steps or say their first words or get discharged from the hospital after being in ICU for days or weeks or months. Right. So it's it's really about giving back to the community. And it's something that's very near and dear to me. So, again, the name is Layla's Gift, L-A-I-L-A -L -A apostrophe S. G-I-F-T. And the name is really dual purposed. It's about obviously the, the gifting that we do for these celebrations, but also Layla's gift, meaning that these children that have special needs and disabilities really come with a gift. They have a natural gift. Uh, you know, one story I always share is most kids learn to go down the steps and they figure out, okay, eventually if I put one foot down and one foot down, I can go down the steps. But to someone that doesn't walk, how do they figure that out? And one day Layla miraculously started scooting down the steps on her own. And that was her gift, right? Of learning how to go down the steps on her own. So, you know, Layla's not alone in this world. There are hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of families that, that deal with uh, situations just like Layla's and Layla's gift is giving back. Fantastic. And where do you have a website or anything that people can go and visit? To yes, www.laylasgift.org. Perfect. Fantastic. Well, there is a link to the website for anyone that wants to go and find out a bit more about Layla's gift, what they do and what they're about and how you can support. Thank you so much. Yeah, the, the funny, the funny story that people tell me all the time, they're like, man, Sherry, you're really all about the, the medical field. When you really yeah. think about it, I'm, I'm not only bringing products to the market, but I'm also making sure that folks that end up using these products are feeling supported and appreciated in our world. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, look, we do, um, a lot of charity work here we donate to lots of charities and organizations and nonprofits and stuff so if there's right. any information or anything that you want to send over to me um i'll have a little look at the website as well and i'll see if we can do anything for you guys as well that would be fantastic thank you so much oh, yeah absolutely yeah fantastic well look that was everything for me um thank you so much for being on on the podcast today it's been really really great to speak with you Likewise. Um, and hopefully we'll have you on again for, for another one of our mini series. Thank you. It would be my pleasure. It was a pleasure speaking with you. And we'll talk Fantastic. again soon, hopefully. Perfect. Thank you very much. Take care.